What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the BTR Garage. My name is Justin. In today's video, we're gonna be improving our data analysis capabilities for my 2022 Toyota GR86. We have a few products that we're gonna install on the car that will help us gather that extra data and telemetry. I'm gonna show you what we've got and then go ahead and get it installed. So as a lot of you might know, one of the key things to improving your race car driving skills and becoming better as a driver just in general is getting data and analytics or telemetry from your car into an application or a software program so you can see what you're doing or what you've done in a previous session, whether it's an autocross or track session. Compare those to other sessions and try to figure out how to improve and ultimately go faster. Most basic data analysis applications or software tools will show you the common things like your speed, the g-forces both laterally and forward and backwards under acceleration and braking, timing as well if you've got a high speed GPS, but for the most part that's pretty much it. When you get to more advanced types of technology you want to see things like your throttle position, your braking pressure, and your steering angle as well so you can have even more detail into what you're doing and when on the track or on the autocross course. Moving over to the bench, we'll show you what I have gathered to improve the data analysis on my car. The first thing is this little adapter right here. This is an OBD2 adapter that allows you to plug in a Bluetooth OBD2 adapter like this OBD Link MX here. These are pretty common for getting data off of your OBD2 port. However, on the GR86, the standard OBD2 port does not update data very, very quickly and some things are even not available on the standard OBD2 port. So what you need is to get into the CAN bus on the car. And without going into too much detail, the CAN bus allows you to see all kinds of additional data in the car at very high rates of speed or very high update speed. And where you find this on the 2022 GR86 and BRZ is on the active sound controller itself. So if you guys remember, we actually disconnected the active sound or ASC connector to disable the fake exhaust note. So oddly enough, within that connector, the CAN bus to the car is is exposed and some of the people out there that have been working really hard at tapping into that have created adapters like this one here. So this actually connects to our ASC port on the car and then we have the adapter for the OBD Link MX. This will just pop right in there and that will give us Bluetooth capability to view the additional data from the CAN bus. The other thing I grabbed was this GoPro seat rest mount and then I picked up this 3D printed phone mount that I'm gonna to use to actually mount my phone in the car since there's not a very good place to mount phones or tablets in the GR86 without something like this. And I'll put the links to these things down in the description so you can check out the companies and the products themselves if you wanna do this as well. So the things that require installation in the car are obviously the OBD2 to ASC port adapter. We showed you how to do this or disconnect the adapter previously in a different video when disabling the active sound controller. This connector just plugs into the feed side of that and then you mount the little OBD2 adapter cable, the black piece or the connector rather, into the glove box. The seat rest camera mount is pretty straightforward. It just has these two holes here that the seat rest goes through and then obviously mounting up your camera. And then the 3D printed phone mount, which we're gonna to use to mount our phone again with the data analysis software. We'll plug this into the dash as well, show you how that's done. We'll start by installing our ASC to OBD2 adapter to get access to the CAN data. We have to remove our glove box, so we're gonna release the little glove box damper. You can use your finger or a tool like extended needle nose like this to kind of just push it off of its connector. Once we have that done, we're gonna squeeze the sides of the glove box to release it from the mounting points on each side. You just reach in there, squeeze both sides, it'll drop right out and we can set that aside. Next, we'll remove the panel on the side of the dash. This is how we access that ASC controller. It's back in there behind the metal. We'll route the ASC to OBD adapter cable through the back of the dash there and what we want to do is kind of fish it through so that we can pull it through the other side on the outside of the dash and this is where we'll attach it to the ASC controller cable you can see it hanging out there I pulled that one out as well connect those two together it looks like this when they're connected and the other end of that if you want to retain your active sound you can plug that end into the other end of the cable 
Next, we're gonna mount the OBD2 adapter to the glove box. You can use this little existing screw in the back of the glove box to mount up one side of it. And then we have a self-tapping screw that actually comes in the kit for the ASC to OBD2 adapter. And we're gonna screw that one up into the top of the dashboard. Again, it just self taps into the plastic. We can get that snugged up. Then we can go ahead and attach our OBD Link MX. And I actually only keep this installed on race days. So when I'm out you know, daily driving, I just remove it and set it aside. Reinstall the glove box. Snaps back in place pretty much in reverse order. Don't forget to reattach the damper to the arm. You can simply pull it down and pop it back into place with your fingers. Close up the glove box, we're good to go there and don't forget to put on the side panel back onto the dash as well. The headrest GoPro mount or camera mount again is very straightforward. Just slide it up onto the headrest rails there and that is pretty much all there is to it. There is a couple screws on the back that you can tighten down for extra security. Now we'll go ahead and grab our 3D printed phone mount. It actually goes in this little spot next to the radio. You kind of wedge the little triangle into the back of the dash there and then push it into place. It does take a little bit of effort to get it squeezed in there, but once it's in place, it is pretty solid. As you can see, we're getting it kind of locked into place there. I'll show you what it looks like once it's in position around on the other side here. And there you go, you can kind of see how it mounts in there. Pretty cool little design. So now that we have all of the new parts installed and ready to go on the car, there's a few other things that we need in order to complete this data analytics package. One of those key components is a high-speed GPS, like this QSTARS 10 hertz GPS, or this XGPS 160, also a 10 hertz high-speed GPS. You can use the GPS in your phone, but they're really not that high-speed and accurate. You're gonna get a much better trace of your racing line with a high-speed GPS like this. They're cheap and they're highly recommended. If you want video of your lapping or autocross session, obviously you're gonna want a camera of some sort. There's all kinds of cameras you can use that most of the software apps support out there. I like GoPros, most everything supports them and they're easy to use. And then of course you're gonna need either a phone or a tablet with your preferred racing application on it. I'm using Race Chrono Pro actually on my tablet. I have it on my phone as well. I like the tablet because obviously you have a much bigger screen to look at when you're looking over the data from your session. And it's just a little bit easier on your eyes. However, you do need a custom mount or a mount that will work with the specific tablet that you have. I'm gonna show you what I have, which works out pretty well with that new 3D printed mount that I have. But if you don't have the tablet, using your phone is fine. Like I said, I've used my phone as well. So next thing we'll do is show you how to set this up in Race Chrono Pro. This is the paid version of the application. I think it's worth it because you can log your data within the app, you can sync your cameras to it, and you can actually overlay your data onto your video all within the application. You don't have to bring it out into a computer or do any additional steps like that. So first thing we're gonna do is go into the settings. And as you can see, I've got my devices added here, my XGPS high-speed GPS receiver. We've got my cameras added, an old GoPro and my Hero 8, which I'm using currently, and my OBD Link MX. With the CAN bus setting, it's important that when you add this device, you do pick the one that has the CAN bus lettering next to it, or the CAN bus name rather, in parentheses. Outside of that, it's just setting a couple units and measurements, how you want them to be displayed in your environments or in your application. And then we're gonna go back to the top where we have vehicle profiles. You do wanna add a profile for your car. We're gonna look at my GR86 and see how that is set up. All of this stuff towards the top, you don't need to worry about too much. The important part is down here in the CAN bus channels. And if we look at one of these here, we've got engine RPM, you can see the various equations and values that need to be put into here in order to get this CAN data converted into readable data within the application. So you're probably wondering where do we find this information? Because for each one of these CAN bus channels, it is a different set of values or equation to get the data properly mapped in the application or properly displayed rather in the equation. So you'll notice the PID and the equation is different for each one of these. If we go into steering angle, it's also going to be different. PID 312, the equation is different. And those are the only two fields that you actually have to change. 
source data, use live data in the solution, which fills out on its own once you enter the data. Those you don't have to touch, just the PID and the equation. So going back to engine RPM, we'll use that as an example. We can find this online in a couple locations, but most importantly out here on a GitHub site by a community member who's done a lot of research on this with some others in the community as well. They've kind of compiled this information and put it together. You can see all of the CAN IDs for the CAN bus, brake position, brake pressure, coolant temperature, all of these different data points that we can input into our app and the according PID and equation that we need to put into the application for them to work properly. So if we look at engine RPM again, you can see we've got PID 64. We've got this equation here. You can go in here and copy and paste this. So if I wanted to copy that, I can go back to the application. I would hit edit and I would add it into here. I'm not gonna do that because I already have it in place. I'm gonna back out. You're gonna notice that I don't have brake pressure down here. So we're gonna add that one. I'll show you how it's done from the get go. We'll go ahead and click on add channel. We're gonna select the channel that we want. There's all kinds of stuff in this list. You have to go through and select the one that you need. So for this example, it's brake pressure. We're gonna go find our PID on Timur's GitHub. Go back to that. So brake pressure. So you can see we have 313. We're gonna go put that in the PID. 313. Hit OK. Source data, use live data, we leave as is. Next thing we're gonna change is the equation. So go back to the GitHub page and make sure we're selecting brake pressure. So we'll grab that whole equation. This one's pretty simple. Copy that. Go back to our app, paste it in there. So now we have our equation in place, hit the check mark and it automatically fills out the solution. We can hit save and hit back. And now we have brake pressure as one of our CAN bus channels. So for each one of these, you just go through, add the channel that you want, find the corresponding values on the GitHub page here, and then you'll have all of your data points set up. And in addition to the CAN IDs and that other helpful information that we just looked over, Timur also has a very detailed DIY or how-to on assembling your own CAN bus reader from electronics parts, wiring, etc. So you don't have to buy the one that I bought that I showed earlier, which is actually a pre-made OBD adapter to the ASC port. This actually shows you how to build it from scratch if you're interested in doing that. Obviously there's a little bit more technical skill required to do that, but he has everything laid out here, how to put together the board, all of the chips, etc. And you have your own homemade CAN bus reader for very inexpensive compared to the other ones that you can buy basically serves the same purpose. Now back in the application, if we were actually in the car, had everything turned on, the car turned on, we can go and test the CAN connection by going into those settings where all of the CAN bus channels are and hitting the test connection. Obviously it's gonna sit here and sit at connecting because we're not connected to it. But what will happen is when it does connect, you'll see all of the values pop up underneath individual CAN bus channel. That's how you know that it is working. When we're getting ready to go out for our session, you can also check it under the start settings of the app. So if you click start, it's gonna go into the run mode. And if we swipe over a page, you can set up a separate page with all of the different CAN channels in it. You can see I added those all here. I have engine RPM, speed, brake pressure, oil temp, throttle position, steering angle. Those things will all start moving and populating with data when the car is up and running as well. All right, so we've got the Race Chrono app set up. We're in our car getting ready for our session. We've got our GPS mounted, we've got it turned on. We've got our OBD Link MX plugged in. The car's turned on, we're transmitting data. We've got our GoPro on and connected via Wi-Fi to the app. Everything's good, you hit the start button, you go out, you do your session. And of course, on the Race Chrono Pro application, while you're driving, you actually have predictive lap timing, which is super helpful to tell you if you're going faster or slower in real time. After the fact, we're gonna jump out of the car, transfer the video from our GoPro to the application, sync them up, and then this is the result that we get with the overlay of the data on the track video. We're at Chuckwalla Valley Raceway running in the clockwise direction here in my GR86. This was just a few weeks ago. 
We've got all of the data set up and being logged in the car and obviously this is the post session recording where we overlaid the track data or the analytics onto the race video. So lots of stuff going on here. The top of the screen you can see all of the timing and uh, lap information and this is showing us live real-time information with speed and both time on how fast we're going compared to our previous lap. It's also showing our best lap, our previous lap, and our current lap that we're on from a time perspective. This is the stuff that you actually see live in the car that I showed on the tablet earlier. And then if we go down to the bottom of the screen, this is where all of the good stuff comes in that we're getting through the CAN bus on the car. The left-hand side, starting from left to right, that's just our G-meter. That's the accelerometer in the phone itself or the tablet itself, so not actually from the CAN bus. Steering angle, that's the next one there that shows how much steering input we're giving the car. Very cool to have. Then we have our miles per hour gauge, our large RPM gauge there in the middle. Then our throttle position sensor, this shows how much throttle we're giving the car. Another super helpful piece of information to have. You can tell how soon you're getting on the throttle, if you're late to get on throttle, or if you did the turn wrong, that kind of thing. And we just did a four-wheel slide through that last corner if you could hear all of the tires screeching. But uh, moving on on the data log down below, we've got uh, brake pressure in the lower right just before we have oil temperature. And you'll see the brake pressure in action right now. You can see how much brake we're giving the car and when. Kind of use this to tell if you're over braking the car, braking too much, too early, too late, that kind of thing. Ideally you want to be on and off the brakes as quickly as possible, then back on the throttle as soon as possible. So you can use this kind of data to help you figure out how you're doing lap by lap and corner by corner. So there we go, we've got a pretty awesome data analytics package with super cool overlay onto our track video. It gives us all of the data and the insight as to what happened. And don't forget, you can actually review sessions on the tablet or on the phone actually between your race sessions. You don't have to actually overlay the data. You can view it all in real time right after it's done as well. And having used a couple other track analytics applications and lap timing types of applications, I think Race Chrono Pro is probably the one that I like the most, mostly because like I said, you can do all of the data overlay and everything right on the tablet. You don't have to use any other device or computer to get that done. If you're interested in any of these products or things that we've used, you can find the links in the description below. Of course, the CAN ID data as well and links to Timur's website or GitHub where you can find additional details on the CAN IDs as well as the DIY CAN bus reader. And hopefully this information was helpful. Help you guys step up your data analysis game with your cars. And like always, if you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, please leave them down below. I would love to hear from you. Stay safe out there. I am checking out and we'll talk to you all next time.